guys, it's Ricky. Welcome back to my channel. I am really excited to film this video today. I haven't filmed in a long time, which I say at the beginning of every single video because I'm very inconsistent with filming. The reason why I'm really excited to film this video today is because since I've started Ricky T Beauty, basically I'm like a dance sport makeup artist. And I've actually started doing makeup on other people's faces and eye shapes and everything, I realized it's actually super, super challenging when you just get used to doing your own face. And probably one of the most common makeup looks, one that everyone always asks for, which is pretty much a dramatic smoky eye. And you always see all these photos on Instagram. If you follow like any of the dance sport, like look pages for hairstyle and makeup, that there's always so many different types of black smoky eyes. But what I wanna do is because I, pretty much never, ever, 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 ever do black smoky eyes on myself. I really wanted to take this challenge and really explain to you guys how I blend out the super dark shadows. Also, just one reason why I've never done a black smoky eye on myself is because for me personally, I feel like when I do a black smoky eye, it just looks like my eyes are like super, super dark and intense and then it makes my eyes look small. And maybe that's just because I haven't done it in a really long time. Maybe now that I'm a little bit more experienced, it'll be better. But on some girls on competitions, full on black smoky eyes look so good. And I'm always so jealous because I'm like, your eyes are amazing for that type of makeup. But I think overall, everybody wants to be able to have that option to do on themselves. Just, and I'm gonna do my best to explain everything that I do. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now, we'll get started. <laughs> if you guys can see it. This is the look that I'm going for today. So pretty much obviously dramatic, black smoky eye, a little bit blended out and accentuated brow bone and inner corner. First things first, I am going to do my eyebrows. I'm just gonna skip through this part because everybody does their eyebrows differently, but I'll just put it in fast motion so you can see what I'm doing. Next thing is we are going to do the tape. So I'm gonna take my regular scotch tape. A trick I've learned recently, if you want your eyes to be really, really smoked out and blended together from bottom lash line to upper lash line, you have to go, instead of putting it right here, you're gonna to have to go down a little bit and put it right here. So it gives you room to connect your under, your lower lash line. So I'm gonna go a little bit down and out towards the tail of my brow bone. Once you think that you get them even, then you're ready to start the eyeshadow look. Now, step one is to prime the lids. You can do this either with an eyeshadow primer or with a concealer. So I'm gonna do concealer today. I'm gonna be using the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Full Coverage Conceal and Contour Concealer. That's a super long name. I believe this is the lightest shade they sell because I'm always the lightest shade. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this and I'm going to be using the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH08 brush. I love this for blending out concealer on the lid and pretty much anywhere else on my face. And I'm gonna make sure that I get from the very bottom of my lid all the way out to the very edges of the tape and up to the brow bone where we had that other concealer by NARS. I'm just gonna use uh, the very first shade in the James Charles palette. It's literally like the color of, of my skin. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put that all over just to set it in place and to make the shadows that go on top easier to blend. So the very first shade I'm gonna be dipping into to create the eye look is gonna be the shade Punch Me and I'm gonna be taking that on the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH30 brush. This is a super, super big fluffy blending brush. Amazing for that first shade that goes into your crease. But you definitely don't have to be neat with this. Just get it all over in your crease from the very, very inner corner. 
to the very, very outer corner, making sure that you touch that tape and go over that tape so it creates a nice edge when you take the tape off. All right, the next shade I'm gonna be going into is the shade Mary, which is this shade right here. I'm taking that on a Morphe M441 brush, another super big fluffy brush, and I'm gonna put that in the exact same spot as I did the first shade. I'm going to now jump into the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. I'm gonna go in with the shade Red Ochre on a Sigma Taper Blending E35 brush. And I'm gonna tap very, very lightly because this has a lot of fallout. I'm gonna be putting that right in my crease. After going in with that red ochre shade, I decided I wanted to go in with something a little bit more vibrant, still in the red family. So I'm gonna take my Festival palette by Juvia's and I'm gonna go in with the shade, the first shade in the palette, Izafa, which is this beautiful red shade right here. I'm gonna go in the exact same spot that I put the red ochre. That's what it's called. Now that that really bright red shade is blended in, you can see I look like I have fire on my eyes, but it's okay. <laughs> We're gonna start going in with the purple tones now. To do that, I'm gonna take my trusty MAC 217 brush. This is a, a little bit more condensed blending brush, and I'm going to very lightly, emphasis on very. I'm gonna go in with the shade Skip, I believe it's called Skip, which is this, it's the darkest purple in the palette. I want it to be kind of undercover like the purple is going to be undercover but it's still there so we're going to start out with a tiny bit and I'm put that right in my crease and I'm just going to very slowly build that up I'm going to hop into the shade Benny I kind of have a feeling it has a tiny bit of purple in it so it's like a super dark purpley brown I'm going to take it on the exact same MAC 217 brush and I'm going to start on my outer corner which is right here I'm gonna start blending it into the crease. This is gonna be like our pre-black. So it's gonna like mush our colors and our black together. So first, just put a, pat it in the outer corner. And then I'm gonna start with circular motions, making sure I bring it to the outside to where the tape is. So we get that nice crisp line. And then slowly in circular motions, blending it into the crease. Definitely do not bring this higher than your crease. Pressing it there, just so we get a good base for it. Then I'm gonna start bringing it slightly up into that crease. And I'm gonna do that with circular motions also bringing it out to the edge of the tape like we did on the other side. All right, now that we have that super dark purple blended in, now it's time for the fun part, which is actually going in with our scary black eyeshadow. I'm gonna start with my Morphe E36 brush, which is this super, super tiny brush. Today, I'm gonna to be using it to start my black eyeshadow in the inner corner. So I get it really, really packed in there. And I'm gonna start it with the outer corner and across the bottom, getting it a really, really matte, solid black. The reason why I'm gonna start with this is because if I go in with my regular blending brush, which usually when I'm going in blending black, I use my Morphe M433, which is pretty much the exact same as my MAC 17. It's just by Morphe. If I use that brush, as you can see, it is much bigger. So when I go in here, I have a tendency to get too high where this pink shadow starts, and I have a tendency to get in towards my nose, and when there's dark eyeshadow near my nose, I hate it. I don't like how it looks on myself, so for me it's super important that I go in with this small precision brush first so I can get as dark and black as I want in here without getting it everywhere else. And I'm just going to go in with the black shade in the palette. Same brush with the black, I'm going to start packing it on the very bottom of the outside. 
kind of in a thick line, almost like I'm doing really, really thick eyeliner with black eyeshadow. I'm bringing it all the way out to the tape, and now I'm just taking it and I'm kind of just getting it right a little bit closer to the crease. Not quite in the crease yet, just getting it closer up towards the crease. Same thing on the other eye. Now, once you get it like that, when you can see the black is all the way at the end, no additional black eyeshadow, just start to bring it up closer to your crease. I'm gonna pick up my Morphe M433. Now, as you can see, this has some leftover black shadow on it. Like I said, I usually only use it for black eyeshadow. I'm just gonna wipe a little bit of it off. And before I go in with any more black eyeshadow, I'm just gonna take where I'm just gonna put it on my lid where the other black eyeshadow is and I'm just gonna start going in circular motions towards the crease just to see if we can move that black eyeshadow that's already down a little bit closer then when we get comfortable we'll add more black eyeshadow all right now because most of that is pretty much blended out to the best of my abilities and when I look straight at it, I mean, it looks pretty black, but it can definitely be darker. I'm going to take a little bit more of the black eyeshadow. I'm just going to start placing it on my lid like this very gently. And then after I do that, just for a little while, I'm going to start adding circular motions towards the crease. Not above, just towards. <laughs> adding just a tiny bit more. I'm going to keep that more central on the lid but the key with black eyeshadow start with a small amount blend 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 once you get comfortable with how it's blended out you can go back and add little by little more and more now once I'm done adding as much black as I want so now I'm gonna go on the other side and start packing up the intensity of the black starting on the lid Tapping motions. Once I get comfortable, I'm gonna start circular motions towards the crease. Now that I'm done building up the black that I'm pretty happy with, I'm gonna take my Sigma E15 brush, which is just a super flat brush, really good for doing shadow liner. I'm dipping it in the black eyeshadow and I'm just pressing it along my lash line now, since there's black eyeshadow everywhere, it's kind of hard to see it, but I'm just gonna create more of a shadow eyeliner. Now that the eyeliner is done, that shadow eyeliner, again, you could easily go in and do liquid eyeliner or gel eyeliner either to the edge of your eye or create a wing. Both of those I'm sure would look super good. I'm just gonna stick with my shadow liner today. Right before I go in with lashes, I'm gonna go back in with that Sigma Taper Blending E35 brush that we use with that really bright pink shade. And I'm just going to, with no additional product, I'm just gonna blend the black and the pink because this is a vital step after you're done with all the black you have to go in and blend out with a clean brush to just minimize any harsh lines that could still be there i'm going to go in with the irresistible lashes by flutter lashes and we are going to see how they look while my eyelash is drying, I'm going to quickly go in with my Inglot Gel Liner and my Sigma Small Angle E65 brush, and I'm just going to do my tight line, which is underneath my top lash line. I just do a really, really thin coat of any mascara that I have just to make them black. Alright, the lashes are on and I'm pretty happy with them. One last step. Pretty much, I'm just adding a bit of eyeliner on the inner corner. 
I feel like it really helps blend the liner and lashes together. And I guess I'm adding a thin coat of liner on top because I just did that and it looks good. So I'm not gonna wing it though. I'm just gonna bring it to the very end and I'm gonna stop there. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do my face makeup. I'm just gonna speed through this because we're more focused on the eyes and I'm sure this is already gonna be a super long video. To start the bottom lash line, I'm going to be going in with my Morphe M321 brush. This is just a really small, fluffy brush, and I'm going to be going into the very first shade that we put into our eyes, and I'm just going to be lightly starting to connect that outer black shadow onto my lower lash line. Now that that shade's down, we're going to go back in with the second red shade that we used called Mary. Same brush, same process, don't want too much, just gonna bring that pinky color down. Going in with a slightly more dense brush, this is the Morphe E18, almost the exact same brush as before, but it does have more bristles, so it's gonna keep the color a bit more concentrated. We're gonna go into that purple shade that we used, that first darkish purple shade that we used called Escape, and we're gonna keep it fairly close to the lash line. All right, after we put that purple shade, we're gonna go in with a even more dense brush. This is the Sigma E36. This is what we use to place that black in the inner and outer corners when we are first starting with the black eyeshadow. Take a little bit more of the black eyeshadow and I'm gonna start blending just from the outside. The very, very outside of this, bringing it in down the lower lash line. Once I get to about the halfway point of my eye, I'm going to lighten it so it's not as thick. The same Sigma E15 flat brush that we use to do our shadow liner on top, and I'm just going to stamp along my bottom lash line and connecting it, my bottom lash line, to the shadowy wing. I'm gonna go in with my Inglot gel liner again, same eyeliner brush, and I'm gonna do my tight line. I'm just gonna use my Kat Von D liner to sharpen it. I'm gonna take my Morphe Times Jacqueline JH42 brush and I'm gonna go in with the white shade in the James Charles palette. It's just plain white. And I'm just going to lightly place it right underneath. Also, I'm gonna do the same thing on my brow bone. Now it's going to be time for my favorite part, which is going to be the white eyeliner, and I'm going to be taking my Inglot gel liner, exact same as the black, 
but as you can see, it is white. I'm going to be taking this on a tiny, tiny, tiny e.l.f. brush. This is the e.l.f. 204 brush. It looks like this. And I'm going to be adding white just right underneath that because I'm trying to find follow the inspiration photo. photo I mean you can see I kind of messed up there you could super super easily leave the white eyeliner like this but in the inspiration photo she kind of had like a triple liner so like she had the black liner here and then she had the white line liner underneath and then she had another black eyeliner starting from like here connecting with the other black liner if that makes sense so again you could super super easily leave it like this Add your bottom lash mascara, lips, highlighter, all done. Or if you want to be dramatic, and for me, because we're in the spirit of trying new things, I might as well try it. I'm going to be taking the Kat Von D liner again and very, very, very lightly making a very thin line underneath the white. Like looking at this, looking at mine. Okay, I'm trying to see where I went wrong. There we have it. You have two options that you can do with the liner. You can do the easier version, which is just the double liner, or you could do the way harder version for me since it's my first time ever doing it in my life with the triple liner. Because I'm not that proud of this side, but I just wanted to be able to show you guys two different options if you just want to make it intense, or if you want to make it super intense and dramatic. Or you could go just for the single white liner. And so let's go ahead and try it on the other side. Lord help me. I just threw on some lower lash mascara, which you can barely see because there's so much black eyeshadow anyway. I would highly suggest using false lower lashes. Personally, I've never done false lashes on the bottom before, but with this look, the black is so thick underneath, you still want it to look like your eyes are open. Eyelashes do that for you. I just don't have any, and I've never done that. So this is what we're working with. And this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lipstick in the shade American Doll. some dark chocolate because it's good it's delicious and since it's 70% dark chocolate that means it's like semi okay for you to eat do 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 zing, zing. behind that red ochre shade I decided I wanted to go in some <sighs> after going in with that red ochre shade I decided I want to go in something a and you might be thinking, Ricky, what the heck are you doing? How is this a black smoky eye? You literally have a red crease. And I understand. It's scary. I am too right now because I'm not sure what's going to happen. But you like my hair? Gee, thanks. Just bought it. And yeah. <laughs> I think that's just like, oh. I was hoping you can see it. I kind of want to do pink. Oh, my hair. Oops. I'm gonna go on with my Inglock. Inglock? No. Sorry, I'm literally a mess because I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. Oh my butt hurts from sitting on this uncomfortable chair. 